if someone says mm. no to Dominic mm. also, <laughs> and he That's and he feels strongly about it that something is right or something is wrong, then he will go after it. He has the ability when others are sitting around to draw out the best of all those other individuals to be able to combine the intelligence, the intellect, the experience of all those individuals to come up with the best answer for whatever problem we're addressing. But the one thing that Dominic has is a bone deep commitment to fairness. He's always been extremely bright, extremely strong sense of humor, and really compassionate about changing the world he lives in. Dominic Cardi came to Fredericton at the tender age of 11 months when his parents, Franklin and Katie Cardi, moved there from England. My family mo moved here because my father and mother wanted a good place to raise a family and they thought Fredericton would be good and it was, it was perfect for that. It would be one of Fredericton's most memorable events of the early 1970s that would introduce Dominic to what would become his lifelong love of flying. 73 flood, we went up to look at Mactaquac. Mm -hmm. And um, by chance, the Air Canadian uh, Air Force, or whatever they were in those days, um, were sending helicopters down to help out. And um, one ran out of gas and landed on the car park at Mactaquack, and Dominic was two, was he? Yes. Going on three. Going on three, and he couldn't believe it, and he thought this was put on specially for him, and they, yes, three. they, they let him up into it. Dominic attended school at Liverpool, Priestman and George Street Junior High, where he played drums in the school band. And it was around this time when another lifelong passion first took root. Dominic felt the call to political action. George Street Junior High, he was, became a menace there. He wanted to uh, start an anti-nuclear uh, campaign. Pulled together a group of my friends at, uh, at the junior high and we went and talked to then mayor uh, Elbridge Wilkins about uh, whether or not we could make Fredericton a nuclear-free zone. I don't, I don't think he had any idea what we were talking about at all. And, uh, to be fair, we didn't really know what we were talking about either. It was one of those things like, why are we, it's like, there aren't any nuclear weapons in Fredericton anyways. In high school, Dominic would meet a man who would give him a political home and shape the course of his future. Well, when I was in grade 10 at uh, Fredericton High School, I remember George Little, who was then the NDP leader, turned up for the model parliament. And I'd been elected as a delegate for, I can't even remember what the name of the made-up party was, but uh, it was interesting. There's a number of current politicians who were there sitting around in that room as well. And they had different reps from the different parties. And I remember George Little came in, he had this thick Scottish accent, and he talked about the need for fairness and for how it was possible to build a better society. And it was a really quick realization, that oh, this is what I believe. And so from then on, I've always identified myself as a New Democrat. He, he's passionate about whatever he does. He's passionate and I think always has been, and finds it very frustrating when there's something patently wrong and you're, the people who have got the power aren't, aren't helping other people, helping the people they're meant to be helping. Nowhere was his passion for social justice more evident than when Dominic was visiting his parents in Africa in the early 1990s. My parents were living in Kenya at the time. My dad was working for the United Nations Environment Program. And this guy had been accused of theft, and he was thrown into prison. And having got to spend time in Kenyan prisons, it's, uh, it's shocking the conditions that people have to put up with, especially in this case, a completely innocent man. My mother had tried to see if she could start helping, and when I was there, I went and spent more time working with the, the superintendent of the jail, who was another very decent man who left a strong impression on me, a guy named John Amundi, who was uh, this incredibly strong, rigid personality who refused to bend the rules, refused to take bribes, which was very unusual there. And after many months, I mean, it was nearly two years, eventually he was finally freed without bribes being paid because eventually the court system succumbed to people who said, we're not going to bend the rules, we're not going to pay you, we're going to keep on insisting that you do the right thing. Dominic graduated from Dalhousie University with a degree in political science. During this time, he served as president of the Nova Scotia NDP Youth Wing, then worked as assistant to the Nova Scotia New Democratic Party's chief executive. 
This led to his co-founding of ND Progress, a group dedicated to reforming and modernizing the federal New Democratic Party. So we pushed for one member, one vote system for electing a leader. Not because that worked to open up the party to a whole new group of people and contributed directly to the election of Jack Layton once that plan was introduced. If we didn't have one member, one vote, we wouldn't have had Jack Layton as federal party leader. Dominic's experience in party reform at home led to an opportunity to help build democracy overseas through the National Democratic Institute. They would go and do the sort of work you often hear about it, connected to Jimmy Carter, that going and doing election monitoring work, uh, checking on elections in developing countries, talking about whether they're up to international standards in terms of the way the, the elections were administered and run, whether there was violence, were the press allowed to ex express themselves freely, were the opposition parties able to contribute. Got to serve that organization in a lot of different countries and experience things I never would have been able to otherwise and meet some incredible people who are putting their lives on the line for the sort of freedoms that we take for granted every day. The more work he did overseas, the more he thought about what needed to be done back home in New Brunswick. Just that feeling just kept growing stronger because I was learning all these things through my international work. But every time I would go through a, a, a learning experience, I'd realize, you know, this is something that would apply back home. This is something that we need to do back home. I mean, it's often said that there's nothing that gives you a better appreciation for, uh, for your home than from being away for a while. So having seen what conditions people have to live in in many, most other places around the world makes you realize how incredibly lucky we are to be here and to, to live in a province that even with all the challenges that we do have, that a city like Fredericton and a province like New Brunswick, it's special. Only weeks after returning to Canada, a chance encounter would introduce him to the woman who would become his wife. When we first started our relationship, uh, he was in the process of moving back to New Brunswick. Uh, he'd come back um, with the, because he was going to come back to New Brunswick, uh, he wanted to come home. I explained to him, we, I certainly wasn't going to do a long distance. So Dominic uh, is, as I say, very determined and started on a campaign not only of convincing me that uh, that we should be together, but also that I was going to love New Brunswick as much as he did. Once she came down for the first time, I thought, okay, this is a great opportunity. So I think we, I trekked you around on the north side. You could see the city, which is you know, a beautiful perspective of the downtown. And we drove up the St. John Valley and up towards the dam. And it must have been sort of, just about springtime as well. So everything was looking very beautiful and the, the waters were high. We could see uh, the river uh, and the city uh, from the other side. Uh, driving up to where his parents now live in St. Andrews, and we could experience the Bay of Fundy. So for me, loving Dominic is very much tied into his love of New Brunswick uh, and how much this province means to him. With a new partner by his side, Dominic became leader of the New Brunswick NDP and set off on course to bring new people into the party. We need all talents to come together and work towards this common goal. And so for me, the, my job as leader, I think, was to formulate what the goal was. And that was building a unity party of former liberals, former conservatives, lifelong NDPers, people who maybe had never been involved in politics or voted before, and say, we're here to try and change the province. There's a whole lot of problems that have been completely ignored for decades now, and we have got to get together and fix them. What was tremendously refreshing about talking politics with Dominic is it would be nice to have a Premier again who doesn't need to be scripted. Supporting Dominic Carty for Premier this time was very simple. There was no way I could go look constituents in a straight, with a straight face and tell them that Dominic Carty wasn't the most qualified person to be Premier. So in the end I'm here because our challenges are big enough to deserve a Premier who has the capacity to take them on, and there really is only one choice. I think Dominic, Dominic has a combination that is very exceptional in the same person. He has, in addition to the youth, the experience. Contrary to the two other chefs of the other parties, he has the youth Alors, il est capable de voir des, des problèmes d'une un, perspective plus jeune, mais il y a aussi l'expérience qui a, qui a fait qu'il a vu dans les autres pays tant de, de, de partis politiques et de, de, de systèmes politiques qui, maintenant, il revient au Nouveau-Brunswick avec toute cette expérience-là. Puis, il en fait, je 
pense qu'il a en fait profité la province. Puis je pense que ça, ça ne peut pas faire autrement que d'être bon pour le Nouveau-Brunswick. I invited Dominic and his wife to come to our home uh, last August uh, on a Saturday afternoon. And at 11 o'clock that night, as we were cleaning up, Dominic and Margot had left, I asked my wife, well, what do you think? What do you think of this guy? And my wife, who's not normally very politically engaged or active, said to me, I'd vote for him. And I said, okay, uh, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, but why? And it was such a simple, perfect answer. And she said, his values. And I think what I'm really offering the people of New Brunswick is a premier who will make decisions, even if they're difficult decisions, and make sure that we get the fundamentals right in our government so that we can have a province that's going to survive and succeed in the next 50 to 100 years. And that's what I'm going to offer people that's not on the table from any other party or any other leader. A really different approach, strong leadership, and a clear plan. If there is a an easy way, a uh, path of least resistance, or a, a, a way of chickening out of making a tough decision, Dominic will be firmly marching in the other direction uh, on the thorny path towards what he believes is fair and right, which is difficult, but I'm extremely proud of him. He wants to hear your opinion, and if he concludes that he is wrong, he will admit that he is wrong more freely than anyone I've ever met. Uh, which is convenient since I am extremely right. I'm asking for people to look at what they've had and ask whether that's good enough and then look at what we offer and imagine what that could be like. And imagine again what it would be like to leave this province, the richest place in Canada, the greenest place in Canada, the fairest province in this country. That's what I'm asking people to join with me in trying to achieve. <laughs>